Hi, my name is Frank Bergschneider, and this is my project presentation for EEL 6825 Pattern Recognition. Uh, the title of my project is Acoustic Recognition of Right Whale Calls. So first, uh, I'll give a brief introduction and motivation to the project. Uh, I'll give an overview of the system architecture. Uh, I'll detail the feature vector extraction and the classification scheme. Uh, then demo my math lab code and then go over the experimental results and then uh, wrap it up with some conclusions. So the objective of this project is to recognize the presence of bright whale vocalizations in audio recordings. Um, there are 400 right whales left worldwide and the number one cause of death is collision with shipping vessels. So uh, identifying these whales in heavily trafficked shipping lanes is uh, crucial to their survival. Uh, the audio signals themselves are taken from the Right Whale uh, Listening Network, uh, which is a system of buoys located in the Massachusetts Bay Area. The signals are recorded at uh, 2000 Hz uh, sampling frequency. Uh, they contain a mixture of man-made, uh, natural ocean sounds, other whales, and noise in them. Um, the feature we're looking for is a distinctive uh, upcall that the whales make in the 200 to 300 hertz range. Uh, below on the graph you can see a unprocessed uh, raw file. Uh, these files are also saved in an AIFF uh, format. So the approach taken for the uh, feature vectors is a uh, modified MEL frequency sepstral coefficient feature vector approach. Um, for the classifier, uh, we're using a two-stage classifier with the first stage being a frequency range threshold classifier and the second stage being a Gaussian mixture model. Uh, in this figure, you can see a spectrogram of the above whale call, uh, which actually contains the distinctive right whale up call, which is this uh, feature right here. So to give an overview of the system architecture, uh, this is the general scheme that's used. Uh, an audio recording is loaded, it's then pre-processed, the spectrogram is computed, uh, the silent frames are removed, the modified spectrogram is then ran through a filter bank, and the log of the filter bank component outputs is taken, and the discrete cosine transform is applied. Uh, this encompasses the feature vector. This feature vector is then given to the first stage classifier, uh, where it's either classified as either a whale if it's inside the frequency range threshold or not a whale if it's outside or ambiguous uh, if there's not a clear decision made. Um, the ambiguous feature vectors are given to the second stage which is the Gaussian mixture model and the larger of the two models is selected and the records are the results are recorded. So to detail the feature extraction process, uh, again, the, the approach taken is a slightly modified mill frequency sepstral coefficient approach. Uh, the basic outline is uh, once a recording is loaded, uh, the spectrogram is computed by taking the squared absolute value of an endpoint uh, fast Fourier transform for each frame. Uh, the signal energy is computed per frame, and the frames that have a mean energy below, have a energy below the mean uh, total signal energy are removed. Uh, this is then fed into a triangular filter bank and the outputs are summed. Uh, in this step, the most common filter bank uh, output features are also tabulated for the first stage classifier. Uh, from there, the output filter bank components are given to uh, this, the next stage, which the log is taken, and then the discrete cosine transformation is computed, uh, which leads to the full uh, 
MFCC feature vector. So delving a little bit deeper, uh, the first step is a low pass filter at 500 hertz uh, to the signal. This removes any higher frequency noise that doesn't really add any information to the signal since we're really interested in the approximately the 150 hertz to 350 hertz range. Uh, from there the spectrogram is computed by taking the FFT uh, for each frame. Uh, each frame consists of 512 uh, samples uh, which is referred to as the frame length. A hemming window is applied to minimize the spectral leakage. Uh, each uh, window is shifted by 20 samples, uh, which is known as the frame interval. Uh, and then the uh, squared magnitude is taken uh, for each frame. At this point, also, the energy for each frame is computed, as given by this equation. It's basically the uh, squared magnitude of the samples in a given frame. Uh, any frame below the below 1.2 times the mean energy of the total signal is considered uh, silence or noise and removed. Uh, so in this figure you can see a unprocessed uh, spectrogram and the below figure is the same spectrogram with uh, this silent period removed. Uh, from there the spectrogram is fed into a triangular filter bank uh, this filter bank uh, consists of 25 linearly spaced uh, filters between 0 and 1000 Hz. Uh, each filter bank uh, output is summed to give uh, 25 different output components. Uh, the most frequent maximum output components per frame uh, are tabulated and then used for the first stage classifier. Uh, this step represents a data compression step since we're going from 257 uh, FFT components to just 25 filter bank components. Uh, this is based on the mil, mil scale uh, frequency warping function, which is a perceptually based uh, scale, which basically reflects uh, hu how human hearing is biased to lower frequencies. Uh, you can't really see, but Above uh, a thousand hertz, the filter bank spacing becomes logarithmic, i.e., it gets bigger and bigger. Uh, just kind of reflecting that uh, humans have a much finer hearing resolution in the lower frequency range and a much worse uh, resolution as we go higher in the uh, spectrum. So, here you can see. Uh, the output of a typical filter bank component of the above signal. Uh, you can see we went from the 257 components to 24. And here we can see this is the fundamental frequency range of the uh, right whale upcall. So from there, uh, the log of the filter bank is taken. Uh, then the discrete cosine transform is applied. This leads to 12... Uh, MFCC uh, coefficients and the discrete cosine transform uh, captures large slowly changing spectral envelope characteristics in the lower components down here and a fine quickly changing noisy structure in the upper components here. This is typically used in uh, data compression where the majority of the energy signal is uh, contained in the lower coefficients and you can disregard the upper coefficients. Uh, in this case we're using all 12 coefficients in an effort to uh, kind of capture the variability in the data. Uh, so here you can see the equation used to implement the discrete uh, cosine transform here uh, with the coefficients given by these. Also, the uh, discrete cosine transform coefficients are uh, sesperal mean normalized, which basically means the mean of each uh, component is taken, then subtracted over the whole signal to take away any kind of static uh, 
environmental recording things that are basically time invariant and don't add any uh, any more information to the uh, the feature vector. So uh, once we've computed the feature vector, uh, we give it to the first stage classifier, which is the frequency range threshold classifier. Uh, here we're looking for the components of the fifth, sixth, and seventh filter bank output, which represent the fundamental frequency of the right whale upcall. Uh, so if the two most frequent maximum filter bank components are inside this range, then we're going to label the signal as a whale. If the most frequent uh, filter bank component output is outside this range, then we're going to label the signal as not a whale. Uh, so here you can kind of see just this in schematic form. Uh, we have the first stage classifier. Uh, you can either label it as a whale if it's inside the frequency range threshold, or out, or if it's outside we label not as a whale. Uh, if it's ambiguous and neither one of these uh, conditions are satisfied, uh, it's passed to the second stage classifier, which is the Gaussian mixture model. So the Gaussian mixture model, uh, we have two of them. One is trained on the whale upcall recordings, and one is trained on the uh, recordings that are not the whale upcall recordings. So the input is the, the full 12-component uh, MFCC vector uh, that we computed earlier. Uh, the output is posterior probabilities for each frame. Uh, then with these uh, prior probabilities, uh, we score the two functions, uh, Gaussian mixture models, by summing the outputs, and then we simply select the larger of the two models. And uh, you can see here kind of the general form of the Gaussian mixture model uh, given by this. This is the posterior probability. Uh, the general form is a summation of the likelihoods times the prior probabilities, uh, which are also known in this context as mixing parameters. And this likelihood is just the uh, general multivariate Gaussian uh, PDF, which is given by this equation here. And uh, this is our decision criteria. We just sum the two Gaussian mixture models and select the larger of the two and uh, label the signal, signal accordingly. So at this point, uh, I'll give a quick run through of the MATLAB code and run some sample tests. Okay, so uh, I'll just go over the main functions here. Uh, the first one is the train Gaussian mixture model uh, function. It basically, it loads the labels for the recordings in uh, it initiates the uh, initial model parameter estimates here for the uh, whale Gaussian mixture model and the non-whale Gaussian mixture model. Uh, then it loops through a series of samples. Uh, it extracts the feature vector from the audio recording and then it employs the EM algorithm to uh, iteratively update the uh, estimates of the mixing parameters, the mean, and the covariance matrix. So from here uh, we have the feature extraction function. Uh, so it basically loads in the signal here, computes the spectrogram of the signal here, uh, removes any silent periods from the spectrogram and then computes the uh, the filter bank and the MFCC components using the discrete cosine transform here. Uh, then the substral mean normalization is this line here and it returns the feature vector. Uh, the next function is the test sample function. Uh, here it loads the Gaussian mixture models. Uh, from there it extracts the feature vector given the uh, input file name and then it classifies the feature vector according to the uh, 
classification scheme, which is basically the frequency range threshold classifier and the Gaussian mixture model scoring classifier. And we also have a batch testing uh, function where it uses a range of recording numbers and it loops through those and compares the results to labeled known recordings and then uh, computes the overall uh, classification rate, the false alarm rate, and the miss rate. <clears throat> so uh, we'll run a couple uh, test samples real quick. Start off with a relatively easy one. So this one's audio recording 7. Okay, so we start at the beginning here. So this is just the the raw unprocessed audio recording. Uh, from here, this is the spectrogram of this recording. Uh, here you can see the characteristic right whale up call. From there we have the uh, denoised uh, spectrogram and uh, also already ran through the uh, filter bank. So we have only 24 components instead of the full uh, 257 FFT components. So here you can kind of see the fundamental frequency range of the right whale up call. And so here is the complete uh, MFCC feature vector. And here we have uh, this first part is the labeled uh, audio recording. And here is the decision that was reached from the uh, classification. So for this one, we got right, there's a whale present, and we detected it. So, trying another one. So we'll try uh, audio recording 35. So same thing, basically. Uh, this is the, the unmodified spectrogram. Here we have the denoise spectrogram ran through the filter bank. And then here we have the full uh, MFCC feature vector. And we have our label here, which is the whale's not present, and our decision here, whale not detected. So that one was correct too. Close all those. Try one more. Okay, so the raw audio recording. Uh, here's the spectrograms. You can see there's not a whole lot going on here other than this low frequency uh, feature down here, which doesn't really look like a right whale recording. It's nowhere near the usual fundamental frequency range. So we have the filter bank output, and you can see it's way low as usual. And so we come to the label and decision. So in this case, this recording actually does contain a whale, but our algorithm did not detect it because of the very low fundamental frequency range, which uh, speaks to the large variability that's in this data set. And let's just do one more, just for fun. Try 1000. So here's something kind of similar. So we have this low frequency feature down here, similarly in the uh, filter bank output. And so here we've made the right decision. This was labeled as whale not present and we decided that the whale was not detected, which this looks very similar to the last one, which the whale call was uh, actually present. Okay, from there uh, we'll just give a quick uh, overview of the EM algorithm. So it's used to train the Gaussian mixture models. Uh, it estimates the model parameters by uh, iteratively uh, finding maximum likelihood estimates for the parameters. Uh, it alternates by between performing an expectation maximization step uh, where the first step is the E-step, which computes a uh, 
expected value of the log likelihood evaluated with the current model parameters and data and a maximization step which computes the parameters that maximize the, uh, the function given in the E step uh, and it can be shown that the uh, maximum likelihood estimates that uh, satisfy uh, this algorithm for the uh, Gaussian distribution are given here uh, this is the mixing parameter, this is the mean vector, this is the covariance matrix. Uh, and these are derived in section uh, 10.4.3 in the Duda Pattern Recognition book. So on to the experimental results. Uh, for a series of 500 test recordings, uh, the correct classification rate was 80.76%. Uh, uh, the miss rate was 7.31%. So if a whale was present and we did not detect it, that was a miss. Uh, the false alarm rate was 11.92%, which was uh, if a whale was not present and we thought it was. Uh, so you can see not great classification rates, but uh, still pretty good given the high variability in the data set. So some of the issues that uh, I encountered while doing the project were the high variability in the data set, uh, just the large amount of different types of right whale calls that were slightly different depending on, on the recording. Uh, I ran into a lot of numerical instabilities in the e algori EM algorithm due to the ill-conditioned covariance matrices between because of the, uh, the high variability in the data again. Uh, also because uh, while the in uh, sample variance was very small uh, in the feature vectors, the variance between samples was very large which uh, kind of caused the EM parameter estimates to oscillate quite a bit and never really converge. Uh, also the presence of environmental noise was a huge issue uh, during testing because noise in the 200 to 300 hertz range can really throw off the classification algorithm. Uh, there's also multiple whales uh, present bright whales that had slightly different speaking characteristics, so to speak, and also other species of whales that had similar calls caused a lot of the uh, false alarms. Uh, also, another big problem was that the non-whale recordings were basically completely random, which made it very hard to estimate uh, parameters for the Gaussian mixture model. And so that kind of leads to one of the key assumptions of using generative models, such as the Gaussian mixture model, which is that uh, the parameters are unknown but fixed, which in this case um, probably wasn't a good assumption because the kind of underlying phenomenon generating the patterns were not not fixed. They were very different from recording to recording. So just as a demo or illustration of that, this is a call of a different species of whale that is very similar to the right whale up call, but this recording is actually labeled as not containing a right whale even though it basically has a right whale up call in it. And this is an example of random noise. Uh, it's most likely ship noise or something, but having this uh, as one input and then having this as another input to the EM algorithm really leads to a lot of uh, difficulties in estimating parameters. So in conclusion, uh, the frequency range threshold and the Gaussian mixture model two-stage classifier was applied to audio recordings of right whale up calls. Uh, environmental noise and data variability had a huge effect on uh, the classification uh, in the training and testing phases. Uh, the different recordings from different whales caused a lot of variabilities in the whale Gaussian mixture models. Um, the no whale recordings were basically completely random which also led to problems in training the Gaussian mixture models for these which led to 
kind of numerical instabilities of the EM algorithm because of the huge changes from uh, training sample to training sample. Uh, another issue was the high computational complexity of the MFCC feature vector. Uh, it requires a lot of matrix algebra to compute, uh, which is very expensive uh, computationally, and you need a really high power processor to do something like this in real time. Um, so I guess other uh, potential classifiers that could be looked into for future work on this project would be something like hidden Markov models, uh, perhaps maybe vector quantization uh, for the different uh, upcalls and using a k-means classifier, maybe even a image template matching scheme might work because of the relatively uh, stable image uh, kind of produced by the spectrogram. Uh, so this concludes my presentation for uh, this project. I'll post all the sample code and report on my website given in the link below. And uh, please feel free to contact me with any questions or comments. Thank you very much.